I have great news. I've finally been approved for my smart visa for this startup that I'm launching in Thailand. More information in the link in the description below. You can check out my landing page. It's a virtual tour startup that I've actually been approved for over a year ago and I just now finally collected the smart visa. It took about an hour and a half. It's through the BOI, the Board of Investment here in Thailand. 10,000 baht, roughly 300 US dollars for six months. And one of the really nice things is that I don't need to do any 90 day reporting. I don't need to make multiple trips to immigration within that six months. And it's also extendable up to, I believe, two or three years once you're bringing in revenue and uh, hiring, basically I'm going to have to hire Thai people eventually, uh, but for the first six months I'm mostly just going to be registering the business, uh, starting to advertise, market, do some sales and start getting more clients in the door. So this is really exciting news and it allows me to stay in Thailand another six months while building my startup. I'm also going to be starting to pitch investors as well. I'm looking to raise a little bit of startup capital just to help with like hiring, marketing, sales, tech, equipment, all that stuff. And so basically I've been on my tourist visa for over two years now. I just kept getting the COVID extensions, but now I'm officially on a smart visa. So if I did want to leave, you know, go to Philippines or Vietnam and come back to Thailand, it's not going to be an issue. It would have been more problematic if I had just stayed on my tourist visa, but now that this is finally taken care of, I can just relax and breathe and I don't have to stress out about uh, any immigration issues while staying in the Kingdom of Thailand. So, very exciting news. I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can get more information about the startup that I'm launching. I have a landing page as well as a full course about how to apply for your smart visa and increase your chances of getting approved. So check that in the link in the description below. And Life is a winding road No telling where it goes I'm on my way to Terminal 21. I got off at the subway stop in Hetchaburi and now I'm walking through a soak. When I was living in Bangkok for about a month, this is where I would spend most of my time. And so it's quite familiar to me. It's going to take about 15, 20 minutes to get to the Terminal 21 shopping mall. Lots of traffic. This is actually one of the busiest areas in all of Bangkok, as you can see. There's a lot of traffic. It's kind of like the business financial district in the city. So it's pretty much busy all day, every day. could stop at this market up here which is quite popular but I think I'm just gonna go to Terminal 21 because the food is very cheap and delicious this is the hotel that I was staying at for about a month while I was living in Bangkok it's the Firama exclusive right here in the so I think it was only like 700 maybe 600 baht per night so I stayed there for about a month and then went back to Koh Samui. Really nice area of the city. If you're looking to live in Bangkok full time, a Sok would be a nice area to get a condo or apartment. Although it's not cheap, you would expect to pay at least 20,000 baht minimum per month. And you usually have to sign like a six month or a year long contract. I was considering renting a condo right in this area uh, but it was going to be a, you know, like 25,000 baht per month and I really don't want to live in Bangkok all that much. I mean, there's a lot more to do here compared to Koh Samui, but I just prefer the peaceful, quiet uh, life compared to the hustle and bustle in the city. I just want to show you the famous Soy Cowboy Road here in Bangkok in Asok. It's still looking pretty dead over here. I think a lot of these places are still closed. This one's for rent.
This is the Soy Cowboy. It's a famous nightlife area here in Bangkok. And uh, it's starting to come back to life a little bit, but still pretty quiet, not too much activity. Of course, it is still just the afternoon. It usually comes alive at night. And more and more tourists are starting to come back to Bangkok, which is very encouraging. It's definitely getting a lot busier here again. Oh. Yeah, so we're just now arriving at Terminal 21. I got off at the wrong subway stop, so it took a little bit longer than I expected to get here. Air conditioning is going to feel nice because I am sweating. It's so hot and humid in Bangkok. Here we are. The food court is on the fourth floor. Okay, so here we are at the food court on the fifth floor, the Pier 21 terminal. It's looking very busy today, as you can see. You have to fill up your card here. <laughs> Come back up. So now I have this card, which I can use to pay for the food. You simply preload it with an amount and then you get the rest back afterwards. Very busy today during lunch. Everybody comes here during their lunch time. It's very popular. This is one of my favorite food stalls right here. They have a pad krapau. It's only 47 baht. They cook it up for you right here, nice and hot. Okay, thank you. Jumping up. One pad krapau mu, it's 47 baht, plus a Pepsi for I think 15 baht. So total, just about 60 baht for the whole meal right here at Terminal 21. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Please subscribe to the channel. I've just been showing you around the Terminal 21 shopping center here in Bangkok in Asok. Highly recommend coming to this place for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. The food court's on the fifth floor. They have some of the cheapest food in the city, large portion sizes, and just really delicious. So check out Terminal 21. I'll leave a link in the description below with a map so that you know how to get here. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes